In the previous episodes, we found out how Blazerplate relieves the developers of the burden of building the same cross-cutting features that they most likely need in every project. So far, we have explored so many built-in features aiming to speed up the project's development process and deliver them earlier. We will continue exploring and experimenting with many other built-in features throughout this series. In this episode, I will show you how to use some of the built-in settings within the Blazerplate environment, which allows you to enforce security policies around password strength, login, and registration. As I'm already logged in as admin, I can reach these policies from the Identity Settings module under the Settings menu. The Identity Settings module contains a collection of settings related to the login and registration policies, so let's explore them one by one. Let's begin with the User Settings tab. In this tab, we will find two policy options. The Allowed Username Characters option allows you to specify the allowed characters that the users can use in the username during account registration. I will leave it as it is. This option indicates whether the new registered user's accounts are active by default or not. If I disable this option, the newly registered users will be unable to sign in after registration. This option allows the administrator to review the accounts of the newly registered users and activate them accordingly. I'm going to disable this option to prevent the new users from using their accounts until they are verified manually by the system admin. In the Sign-in Settings tab, the Required Confirmed Account Policy option indicates whether a confirmed email address is required for signing in. I'm going to disable this option to allow the users to sign in with an unconfirmed email. In the Password Settings tab, we will find a bunch of policy options. The Required Length option represents the minimum length of the password. The Required Unique Characters option represents the minimum number of unique characters which a password must contain. I'm going to leave these two options as they are, but I'm going to enable all of the other options which are required digits, require lowercase characters, required non-alphanumeric, and require uppercase characters. In the Lockout Settings tab, we will find some other security policies. Account lockout policies aim to prevent credential theft, credential stuffing, and brute force methods of guessing the username and password combinations. This is an important aspect of not only securing enterprise systems, but also securing users' personal accounts and information. The default approach to this is to make it harder for potential attackers to compromise accounts by slowing down the authentication cycle and making users wait longer and longer every time there is an unsuccessful login attempt. We can usually assume that legitimate users might mistype their password once or twice, but not numerous times. Therefore, multiple failed login attempts can indicate that someone is trying a brute force password attack. So I'm going to enforce this policy for all new users. The default lockout time span option represents the time in minutes that the account can be locked out. For example, if the account locks out for 5 minutes, the user can try again after that time. I'm going to leave it as it is. The Maximum Failed Access Attempts option represents the number of failed access attempts allowed before a user is locked out. I'm going to change it from 5 to 3. Now, it's time to apply the new settings. Let's evaluate the impact of these settings in the sign-up form. I'm going to sign up for a new account using Cameron's email address and a weak password to evaluate the current password policy. As we can see, the password policy was enforced as expected. Now I'm going to try to sign up using a complex password to satisfy the password policy requirement. Notice that the system responds with a message indicating that the account has been created successfully. Also, it indicates that the account is deactivated according to the sign-in policy. Therefore, I will no longer be able to sign in as Cameron Lewis unless the system admin activates his account. So I'm going to go to the users list from the other window to activate Cameron's account. As we see, Cameron's account is indeed created and deactivated, so I'm going to click on edit, then I'm going to go to the account tab to set the suspend flag to false. After saving the form, notice that Cameron's account is now activated, but his email is not confirmed yet. Now I'm going to go to the other window to log into Cameron's account. Notice that I managed to log into Cameron's account even though his email address is unconfirmed since the current sign-in policy doesn't require using a valid email address during registration. There is one more policy I want to evaluate. 
I'm gonna log out then try to log into the same account, but this time, I'm gonna use an invalid password. Notice that if I try to sign in more than three times, the system will enforce the current lockout policy on Cameron's account and get it locked out for five minutes. Thank you for watching.